In this video I will explain how to use height maps. Height maps are stored as regular PNG files inside of the maps directory in the resource directory. You can create a height map in any graphics program. Try to make sure the edges of the image are black or you may get some artifacts. By convention you should save your image in a subfolder with the name of your mod inside of the map folder. The height map settings are found in the map properties, which you can access by deselecting all objects. The height map file can be selected in this list. If you have added or removed a file, you can click in the main window and press F7 to reload the list. After modifying the height map settings, you can press this button or click in the main window and press F8. The X and Y scale factors set the distance between two pixels on the height map in game units. To avoid rounding errors, it is best to use integers. The set scale controls the height difference between the darkest and brightest possible value. This should be a number between 0 and 1 to prevent integer overflow. A value of 1 means the largest possible height difference will be 65,535 game units. The northwest coordinate indicates the position of the height map in world space. The X and Y coordinates indicate the location of the upper left pixel on the map. The Z coordinate is the baseline, that is, the height of a pixel with the darkest possible value. Height maps can have up to four channels, so it helps to use an image editor where you have some way of modifying the channels separately. The red channel is the actual height. When you have modified the height map and saved the file, you can click in the main window and press F8 to reload it. If you have only changed a part of the image, the computation will take less time. The green channel controls the texture. The texture order from dark to bright is sand, grass, rock and snow. If I make the green channel very bright, the terrain will be more snowy. You can use this to do things like painting a dirt path. The blue channel controls the brightness of the terrain. So if I make the blue channel very bright, the terrain will also be brighter. The alpha channel is for making holes in the terrain. Pixels with zero alpha will create a hole centered on that pixel. To help with beautifying holes, you can use a utility object called the map hole tracer. Create it inside or nearby the hole. If it is not inside the hole, you can use the offset properties. In this case, the hole is about 100 units in the negative y direction. So this can be minus 100. Next, set the scale factor to the intended scale factor of the model. It can be a good idea to use the same scale factor as the height map itself. Once you are happy with the location and scale, you can press the export obj button. This will create the map hole tracer model file in the game folder. Import this file into your favorite 3D modeling software. Make sure you use the y forward setup convention when importing. This model now contains a copy of the geometry surrounding the hole. You can use this to create fancy cave entrances or other types of geometry that blend in with the terrain. Export the model as I explained in part 5. Select the Vol Objimesh object, press F7 to reload the model list, and select your model in the list. To copy the location and scale factor of the map hole tracer, you can select it and press Shift Space, then right click. You can now delete the map hole tracer. To make your model blend in with the height map, you can use the terrain material. To make it blend in better, you can adjust the color, you can tweak the model a little, press this button to reload the model after re-exporting it. For even better results, you can also try to modify the blue channel of the height map. Typical images use a bit depth of 8, so each channel is limited to only 256 different values. For some maps this is not good enough. For instance, here you can clearly see the limited vertical resolution. There are two possible solutions. One is to use image files with a bit depth of 16 instead. This can lead to far better resolution, but you will need to use graphics software that supports it. And keep in mind, if you view them as pictures, most hardware can't really display them accurately. The other solution is to use the blur option. This also leads to better vertical resolution, but it does make it significantly more difficult to create precise shapes since each pixel will now affect the neighboring pixels. Also note that only the red channel is blurred. 
The height map has levels of detail, so if you zoom out it may be simplified. The user can change this in the graphics settings. By default the terrain uses smooth shading only. You can give it sharp edges by reducing this number. An edge is rendered as sharp where the surface bends by a number of degrees that is greater than this number. Again, you need to press the apply button or F8 for this to take effect. Enabling sharp edges will increase the computation time. You can enable or disable the floor, which is the black plane that extends in all directions on the sides of the height map. You can also enable or disable the sea and set the water height. Note that the sea is not automatically clipped against the height map. This means if you want to allow the player to go below the water level, you need to use water hole object. This object creates a rectangular area without water that the player can pass through. You will generally want to hide it so that the player cannot see the edge of the water. Only one hotkey was introduced in this video. I will put the full list of hotkeys in the video description as usual.